we've had a preliminary to decide the order of speaking, and it's my pleasure now to um, introduce to you again Rafael Mobegi from Caraville High School in Hastings. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, you might wonder what a black guy is doing here today, speaking to you about New Zealanders at war. I'll tell you what I'm doing here today. I was born in a country far, far away in Kenya, a country that is so rich in resources, but not so rich in opportunities. But 18 months ago, I started a journey, a journey to find the promised land. And when I arrived in New Zealand, I was home, I was in the promised land. New Zealand is my land of opportunity. New Zealand is the land I call home, the land of milk and honey. Now that I'm living in New Zealand, I am becoming a Kiwi. I do a certain achievement standard with Kiwis, I hang out with Kiwis. I go to McDonald's and sometimes I do the hacker if necessary. But I know that this is not the meaning of being a Kiwi. It's something so much more than this. And that's why I'm here today, to tell you about the true meaning of being a Kiwi. You know, when I first heard of this speech contest, I read books, I looked at monuments, I visited websites. But somebody told me, what you have to do is to search the heart of a Kiwi and know what lies under there. And this person told me a true story of one of our, of our veterans, Alfred Reeves. Alfred Reeves was born in Maraikakaho, south of Hastings, in 1898. He was a very good young boy from a very humble family. He loved to work on the New Zealand land, and also he loved nature. He had a great future in front of him. That boy was very good with number eight racing wire. He could fix almost anything. But soon it was 1914 and the German Kaiser was strutting and posturing on the world stage. And before you knew it, England was at war with Germany. And Lord Kitchener was appealing to young men all over the colonies, your country needs you. And so young men rose up, young men from farms and fields, from factories and offices, from field mongeries and freezing work, all of them with one aim, to represent their country, New Zealand. Alf wanted to go too, so he went to his father and said, Dad, I want to go too. But his father was a very stern man. He said, no, we need to stay here in our farm because we need to make food for our country. So Alf had to stay. But one day, Alf was walking in the street. And as he was walking in the street, a lady cried out, What are you doing, young man? People of your age are all at war, and you are only at home. Then the lady did something. She showed Alf a white feather. At that time, a white feather was the ultimate symbol of cowardice. <gasps> a white feather! How was she to know that Alf was only 17? And so that night, Alf lied to his father for the first but the last time. He went, joined the army, lied about his age, and soon they were training him. He was shown, he went with all the other soldiers, and they practiced Get that step right, heads up, what do you say? Yes, sir! He was given a big bayonet. He was taught how to aim, how to reload and shoot. And soon, he was ready. He was shipped off to go and work in the Western Front, somewhere between the borders of France, Belgium and Germany. But he had great pride in serving his country, New Zealand. So, on the morning, of September the 15th, 1916, Alf and his 
Cobra Henry. They stood tense and never waiting to go over the top. They used to fight in trenches and they would go over the top direct into open gunfire. And so Alf was just waiting for the shrill whistle. And soon enough, the shrill whistle blew. And up over the top they went straight into open gunfire. He was with his friend Henry, but Henry was the one who coped it, who coped it fast. He was shot on the leg, but Alf did not um, abandon him. Until a shell finally landed on him, wounding him. When the stretchers came, it was too late because Alf had already died of horrendous wounds. He was only 18 at that time when he died. He was part of the 18,000 that died in the World War I serving New Zealand. You know, war tests our humanity. And when it has tested New Zealand, few men have rose up from a group of equals and stood for us. These are our veterans who have served us round the country. They have served us in numerous operations. They have served us in the Afghanistan War, World War I, World War II, in Bomia, very many wars, and peacekeeping operations such as East Timor and the Middle East. What these people do is they bring out the best out of the New Zealand society. The courage, the strength, the honor and the identity they give us as Kiwis is something that I call the true meaning of being a Kiwi. The virtues they represent, that is the true meaning of a Kiwi. And that is what our, our veterans reflect. So to me today, that is mean the meaning of being a Kiwi. All the good virtues that our veterans reflect. So as they sweetly sleep, we should be able to honor them. No, 